G'day there guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. Let's go. Am I the asshole for getting mad about my boyfriend's guy nights? So me and my boyfriend C have the same friend group. There are five guys and three girls, including myself, who are all dating guys in this group. For context, I was introduced to the group four years ago, and I started dating C over a year ago. He joined a year before we dated. Anyway, on to the story. So the boys in my friend group have started a thing called Guys Night, where they go out and do everything we all do together, but without us girls. Here's the thing, all of my friends are the boys. I don't know the girls in the group too well, and while I have friends outside the group, I am nowhere near as close with them as I am in this group. They say they need to spend some quality time with their friends, and that if I went, they would have to invite their girlfriends. And it's not every so often, it's every two weeks on a Saturday, which is the one day that I can't go out. So basically, while my boyfriend goes out with all my friends, I have to be stuck at home by myself. And what's worse is when we all do hang out, they constantly bring up stuff that happened on guys night, saying, oh, you had to be there. This has been going on for months. Last night, my boyfriend came over to mine from guys night really happy and was texting his friends when I asked him why I couldn't go. He made a vague gesture at my chest and crotch, saying I wasn't a guy. I then asked him why he couldn't skip it to spend the night with me, and then he rolled his eyes. I lost it. I started crying and screaming at him, calling him an asshole for allowing me to be completely isolated when I've told him how shitty it is. He ended up leaving and called me a cow. He's staying with one of our friends who was saying I was being the asshole for yelling at him that way. The girls all agree with me though, and I don't know if I should apologize. Edit. I feel like everyone is confusing what I'm saying. I'm not mad he has his own buddies. That's amazing. I'm just upset that I'm being excluded because of my gender from my friends who I introduced him to. I've been told explicitly this by him and his friends. Also, we don't live together, and I only see him a few times a week. Edit 2, I should also add my boyfriend sees all his friends during the week, but they schedule guys night on the one night that I can go out. As I said in a comment, I see him two to three times a week, and he sees them at least four times, five on guys night. I see my friends once a fortnight. In the comments, you're the asshole. Let your boyfriend have his guy nights, and perhaps look into why you had such an extreme reaction to this. OP replies, Because my friends are ditching me because of my gender. No they're not. They are having a guy's night twice a month, hardly often. Go out with other friends. My husband goes out every Friday, in normal times with the blokes in our friend group, so me and the only other woman go for a cocktail or the like instead. And we don't have a great deal in common, but we enjoy it. OP replies, They literally said they want to invite me, but they don't want their girlfriends to come. Sounds like excluding me because of my gender. Not the asshole, but I'm afraid you're avoiding the larger issue. It's not about making him choose to see you instead of them. Would you really want him with you knowing that he wants to be with them? It's about you recognizing you're investing emotion, months of your life, and effort in a guy who doesn't enjoy being with you as much as he enjoys being with his friends. That's where his preference is. Being hurt, as you have a right to be, complaining and crying may, but probably won't, temporarily change the behavior, but they don't change who he would prefer to be with. He may feel affectionate towards you. If you're having sex, he may be using you for that, but you don't have his heart, and that's not likely to change. Stop whining, just tell him as nicely, undramatically, but bluntly as you can that it's not working out. You care about him, but you would like someone who you can spend your time with. You are not mad, you are not all broken up, it just looks like you want different things and then move on. Or hang around being miserable, being used when he feels so inclined, and wait for the day that you discover he found someone who rings his bell in a way that makes him want to be with her instead of his boys, and instead of you. And now, on to the update. So about two weeks ago, I posted here asking if I was the asshole for getting mad at my boyfriend for his guy nights. The post didn't get a lot of attention, but the attention it did get was controversial, and there was a lot of deferring opinions, so I figured I'd do an update as a lot has happened. 
So after I posted, I ended up contacting the girlfriends in the group to see what was up, and we started noticing something fishy. Their boyfriends and the guys in the group would say the exact same things to them as they did to me. Stuff like, oh, we would invite you, but then the other girls will want to come. We also figured out that there were other nights that all the guys were free, but that wanted to do Saturday nights for some reason. One of the girls, H, was suspicious of this, and many other reasons, so she checked her boyfriend's phone. I don't condone what she did at all, by the way, but in this circumstance I excuse it. While looking, she found a group chat called Boys Night, which she had never heard of. She was super suspicious at this point, and she clicked it to be greeted by a bunch of very interesting messages from the boys in our group. Well, guess what? Turns out, Guys Night was really go to a pub and cheat on your girlfriend night. The message was in reference to one of the girls my boyfriend was sleeping with last week. In fact, all the other guys except one were cheating, while the other knew but kept quiet. Another lovely discovery from the chat was that he hasn't been using protection with the other woman or with me, birth control. Meaning not only has he been cheating, he's also been putting me at a high risk of an STD, while also risking mine and my elderly grandfather's life because of COVID. Needless to say, we've broken up and I feel better for it, but right now I'm friendless, single, and waiting on STD results, which doesn't feel fantastic. So yep, definitely not the update that I was hoping to do, but life clearly doesn't turn out the way you plan. Edit, wow, I really was not expecting this response. Thank you for all the kind words. I'm at work at the moment and will try to respond as much as possible, but from the bottom of my heart, thank you all. And also thank you for the award. I'm very overwhelmed by all the kindness. Edit 2, thank you again for all the kindness. I just thought that I'd add a few things. 1. COVID isn't bad where I am, Australia, but when we hang out, we social distance with masks. You can't social distance during sex, which is where my fear of COVID comes from. 2. One of the girls dumped her boyfriend, who wasn't cheating but knew, and the other took him back, he was cheating. And finally 3. I am STD free. I got a call an hour ago and am so completely relieved, now I can start to move on. In the comments, not the asshole. I feel for you, as my first husband, no kids, pulled this crap all the time while we were married, along with the STD testing. It was better to find out about the group chat than through an STD. I'm so sorry that this is the update that you had to give. I'll be the first to admit that I was on the fence after reading your original post. To me, guys nights just aren't the same if a girl is along. However, my guys nights with my friends involve everyone bonding together as guys over a few beers. Not going down to the local pub and seeing who can cheat on their significant other. I don't even want to imagine what the dynamics of your friend group are going to be like now, but I wish you the best in finding a new, better group of friends and boyfriend. Good riddance to those boys and the environment they created amongst one another. Let's put the cheating thing to the side. I want to imagine if a guy snapped at his girlfriend for not taking him with her to her girls' night. Well, if the girls' night happened every two weeks on only his free day, and everyone who went were his friends for longer than they've known girlfriend, yeah, I wouldn't blame a guy for being upset. Am I mean for judging OP? Like, obviously her boyfriend is horrible, but I feel like people are relatively consistent in their conduct, and I think the character of the people you choose to be around with says something about you. In my opinion, there is no way OP's boyfriend and his friends were just douchebags in this situation, especially given the whole crotch show thing. Especially when the situation involves constant lying, endangering others, and cheating. No one just wakes up randomly a horrible person. So to me, OP had to be knowingly dating a douchebag and exclusively hanging out with douchebags. It's just he wasn't an over-the-line asshole until he cheated. That's maybe a little bit mean. I think some of these jackasses will present a very nice facade until they feel you've become too enmeshed in their web to get out when they reveal their real face. And, since her guy friends turned out the same way, it's possible that they were doing the same thing in an attempt to keep OP around as backup in case one of their girlfriends caught wise and dumped them. Which could also explain some of why she wasn't better friends with the girlfriends. The guys were keeping her segregated on purpose so she wouldn't catch on to their real reasons, slash the girls knew she was a backup girlfriend and kept themselves at an arm's length.
Our next post is titled, I, 16 male, have a four-month-old daughter, ex-girlfriend wants to go to college, and I am worried. Before anyone says anything, yes, I knew about condoms. I was just dumb. Story time. My parents divorced when I was 10, but lived primarily with my mum. Tiffany's, 16, parents are together. When our parents found out she was pregnant, her parents kicked her out, and my mum kicked me out, so now we live with my dad. During the pregnancy, my dad took my mum to court and got primary sole custody. I know what this means because I had to go to court for my daughter. He sued Tiffany's parents for legal guardianship, and they now pay child support for her, and they're pissed and refuse to talk to us. I'm in my bedroom, and my daughter is in her bedroom, and my ex is in the guest room that is now hers. My dad made a deal with us. We live with him until 18 with no rent payment, but at 18, we need to decide what it is we do. I wasn't really that good in school, and Tiffany is a grade A student. So I took my GED, and my dad got me into welding school. I finish in two months. I also work full time, so I do welding school at night. Tiffany goes to school and works on the weekends at Wendy's. This whole thing is a huge ordeal. We literally have no life. My dad helps, but not that much, because he feels it's our responsibility, which I agree, but still sucks. I work 6am to 3pm at a warehouse, and go to school from 6pm to 10pm. Tiffany's home by 2.30 and picks up our daughter from daycare. We help each other out a lot, and then I head off to school, and she stays with her at home until I get home, and do it all over again, day after day. When our daughter was born, my dad made us go to court. We have 50-50, and I don't pay child support because she lives with us. Because I work full-time, I can get healthcare for my daughter and myself, and that sucks. It costs me $300 a month, and daycare is $400 a week. Literally, Tiffany works just so we can pay for daycare, and I pay for everything else. When we're short for cash, my dad will help because he sees that we are trying. My dad has been our rock. When we're tired and exhausted, he'll step in and give us a break here and there, but he makes sure that we have everything we need and keeps us motivated. Tiffany wants to apply to college soon and I'm worried because I don't want to keep living with her and I don't think that I can keep our daughter full-time as a welder working 12-hour shifts. But she says she will start at community college and work but wants to stay with us living together since it's easier, since I will be working and it will be best for us to stay with my dad. But dad said at 18 that we have to pay rent. She doesn't mind but I don't want to keep living with her because we aren't together. I am unsure how to tell her this. My dad thinks she should stay with us as long as she is a full-time student to finish her degree because I'm already getting my career together. I just feel that this is all unfair because the burden is on me. I guess I'm ranting because I'm scared and unsure of what this all means. Edit. I guess my thing about her living with us is that we are more like siblings now. We get along and joke and stuff, but since she's my ex, I feel weirded out by it. Maybe I need to take a breather since everyone is saying it's a good thing. Also, I needed to hear it from other people, and not just my dad, and he is pretty solid, and I should thank him, maybe take him out to dinner or something. Second edit, my dad isn't kicking us out at 18, but he wants to be realistic to the world and pay bills. The money he gets from Tiffany's parents he just gives to her. She's saving up money for a car, and uses other money for her specific foods and clothes. Before I became a dad, my dad always wanted me to live with him at 18 and figure it out and stay with him and save money to buy a house. When he found out that I was going to be a dad, he wasn't mad but disappointed and said everything has to change. He is also paying for my welding school which costs 20k and he bought me a car but I do have to pay my own insurance. He does help as long as he sees that we are trying and not being lazy. When school recently started, he took my daughter to daycare every morning and helped Tiffany with a routine to get schoolwork done. Final edit, I have to get to class now. Tiffany wants to be a nurse or PA, but the college told her nursing school is hard to get into and it's best to have a high school diploma, which is why she is still in high school and working the weekends. But someone mentioned a dual thing for community college and we'll look into that. So we couldn't get daycare assistance because we are minors and they used my dad's salary. 
The funny thing is I can't open a checking account for myself because I'm a minor, but the bank allowed me to open a children's account for my daughter because I am her parent. Lol, the irony. I read every single comment, and it's given me a different POV, and I guess college seems so far, and I was counting years. But it's really not that bad, like, she's like a sister now, and for those who asked, I doubt we will get back together honestly. I'm not thinking about anything like that right now. I am too tired to think of a relationship or that type of future. In the comments, your dad is an amazing man. You're right, being an adult and a parent is a burden. It sounds like you're working hard to make a good life for yourself and your kid. Keep doing it. Keep following your dad's advice because it is good. Ultimately, you don't get to choose where your kid's mom lives. Your dad gets to decide whether he will rent to her because it is his house. You can choose for yourself. Do you want to pay rent at your dad's or somewhere else? Check out your options and see what makes sense for you. And also, tell your dad how much you appreciate him. OP says, My dad has been great in all of this. I guess it's just a reality for me right now. I know living on my own will be far more expensive, and he's giving me two years to save money, so I don't think it'll be that bad of rent he is asking for. I guess I just had to hear it from other people, and not just my dad, that this is the right thing. I still feel like he's trying to tell me what to do, and I get annoyed I guess, like every other teenager. If it helps, I'm 30, and my mom still tries to tell me what to do. Your dad spent a lot of time just being dad. Now he's also trying to figure out how to be dad and grandpa while giving you support but not suffocating you. Transitions are hard. Some days are going to be hard. That's normal. If you can find even 30 minutes a day to find time to do something just for you. As a parent, it is easy to get lost. There is so much that needs to be done when you work and have a baby, but you're still a person with their own wants and needs. You need something that anchors you and feels like it's just yours. In my experience, that helps. I think you should listen to your dad as much as possible on this. Your ex should stay with you guys as long as possible, so you both have the greatest chances of success in being able to take care of your daughter. I know it sucks, but you can't be worrying about your feelings towards your ex right now. You gotta continue to focus on your daughter who is helpless and needs you very badly to keep her best interests in mind. When you're a little bit older, you'll thank yourself profusely for stepping up at this time to take care of that baby. You should be proud of yourself as it is. You stepped up to the plate and are working very hard to ensure a good future for the baby and for yourself. Not a lot of teen fathers your age can say that. Remind yourself that it won't always be so difficult. The baby is brand new and has a lot of needs right now and you are so young and still growing up yourself. In a few years, things will be much easier for you all. You'll be more capable, and so will the baby. Just keep your chin up and stick it to the grindstone. Do your best, and continue to work hard. It will all pay off in the end when you see that child grow up happy and loving her dad. And OP replies, Honestly, I don't think I would be this good if it wasn't for my dad. He keeps me in line. You're right. The more I think about this, it's messing with me because I see Tiffany more like a sister now, like we laugh and mess with each other like siblings, but she's my ex and it kinda weirds me out. And now on to the update. I don't know why I feel like I need to make an update, but here it goes. Tiff and my dad went to the school and were able to get her enrolled in college courses because of her grades. She won't graduate high school way too fast, but she will have enough to finish high school hours by next December, so six months early. She reapplied for assistance and we got a voucher for daycare, so now it's $50 a week. She quit her job so she can focus on school, but she doesn't start college until spring, so that's cool. It gives her some time. She still wants to be a nurse, so that's cool too. I got a new job that pays more as a forklift operator and will give me an internship for welding, which I won't be able to start until November slash December until I finish my classes and then I have to do a two month internship but they are paying me really good. I started Monday. My dad and I had a long talk about my fears, and he reassured me that it's okay to be scared, but we have a game plan. He is fixing up the basement to make two bedrooms and a living room like a little apartment, because he said Tiff and I will need space as we grow. He wants me to buy the house when I'm 18 like he did with his parents, 
and he will help me pay it off as long as Tiff gets to stay until she finishes college and makes her own choice. We all agreed this is the best option, and we are all really much happier now. I guess I just needed to let it out. Tiff and I are great. While being parents is hard, it's been good now, so we feel a bit more secure. My mom and Tiff's parents still haven't spoken to us because we aren't married, which does make me sad, but it's okay. We have my dad. Tiff's grandparents bought her a car and said that's all they can do for her and not to contact them again until we're married. The car needs some work, but I'm going to pay for it to fix it up. It needs brakes, suspension, and some regular maintenance. My dad finally told me what all happened, and I didn't know, but it made me open my eyes to all of this. My dad met my mom in high school too, and they were together and got caught kissing. Since my mom's family are Baptist, they forced my dad to marry her. I didn't know that in Missouri, parents can marry their kids at 15, which is why my dad has been so protective. They were going to marry Tiff and I because she was pregnant, and when my dad stepped in, they couldn't. My mom and Tiff's dad went and got a license for us and were going to marry us in their church. I guess I wouldn't have minded marrying Tiff, but I would rather do it later. But yeah, that's why they aren't talking to us. My dad did say that if that happened, he would help us get it annulled, but we have no intentions of speaking to them right now. He explained that Tiff is stuck, and while I might be afraid, she is even more afraid because she has no one, and I need to reassure her that we are here for her as a family. I guess I couldn't see it that way, and it's good that I talked to him. I hugged my dad, and I have been hugging him every day now, and it's nice, it's made us closer. All of this information made me pretty sad and grateful at the same time, and it helped Tiff and I really start talking more. Like, we talked, but we didn't talk. And I didn't know that she was scared too. We are now doing days for us to be kids, as my dad says. So we both still hang out with our friends who still talk to us at least once a week, and Tiff and I do a lot of stuff on the weekends now that she doesn't work. Like taking Jelly to the park and going for walks, and we did a pumpkin patch. Jelly seems to be happier too, and Tiff doesn't seem as tired anymore. Anyways, thanks everyone for the help, tips, and encouragement. I doubt I will update again, and just lurk for parenting advice. Edit, just want to say thanks for thinking I'm a great dad, but I don't believe it just yet. I depend a lot on my dad to help me. Tiff and I are trying. We do take parenting classes, and they offer us a lot of advice, and we have made friends there, which is nice. But I don't think that we would be this prepared without my dad. Also, Tiff is on WIC, and we take parenting and co-parenting classes. Those are my dad's rules. In the comments, This is identical to where we started as teen parents almost nine years ago. Keep working to improve yourself, graciously accept help from your family, and you will do just fine. My ex-fiancé and I didn't stay together, but we are doing well separately. He does IT, and I recently quit nursing to take on a different healthcare career. I'm a homeowner as of a few months ago. It's been brutal at times, but is so worth the struggle. You can do whatever you set your mind to. OP replies, For real? Does it get better? Oh yes, absolutely. You will grow into your careers. Your child will get older and amaze you damn near every day. Your relationship with your dad will evolve. You may even see the other parents come back into your life. My own dad was less than supportive and came around and even apologized for his actions. Keep doing the right thing and you can go on to do well for yourself. OP replies, That's positive. It's not like this is easy or too hard. I mean, it's hard and we are tired, but it's really stressful. Sometimes I think I'm in a tornado and can't see straight. Sometimes it's a sensory overload. Between work and home, I feel like I'm drowning. You can be 30 and have kids and feel that way. A kid turns your life upside down and inside out at any age. I'm glad your dad is helping you, and that you're able to appreciate it. He barely got done raising you. And that's where I'm going to finish today's episode, guys. I do hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.